Hey guys, welcome to my fourth episode on masking. Today we're gonna to be talking about how you can achieve masking effects in 2D Canvas. So let's dive in. So we're gonna start off with a pretty basic HTML document with a single canvas element in it. And you can see it has the ID my canvas and a width and height of 500. So the first thing we're gonna do is get access to our canvas element in JavaScript. So we're gonna get document element by ID my canvas. Then we're just going to get a reference to that canvas's 2D context so we can do drawing calls on it. The next thing we're going to do is create a draw method. And this is where we're going to actually draw all our content onto our canvas. And we're going to simply call that method initially. Then we're going to clear our canvas context. So every time we call our draw method, it's going to completely erase everything on our canvas. And we do that by calling context clear rect and then enter the rectangle dimensions that we want to clear. In this case, 0, 0 to the canvas width and canvas height. So next we're going to set a fill color by calling context fill style and setting it to that color. Then we're going to draw a rectangle by calling context fill rect. And this allows us to both draw and fill a rectangle in one line rather than drawing the rectangle and then filling it separately. And we're just drawing it to the same dimensions of our canvas. Then we're going to set a new fill color and we're going to create a loop that iterates over 100 and we're just going to draw 100 random squares within our canvas. So we're going to set the X position of all these at random multiplied by the width for the X and random multiplied by the height for the Y. And then we're going to set the width and height to anywhere between zero and 100. So math random times 100 for width and height. Then if we test this, you can see we get our background fill color as well as a bunch of random squares or rectangles drawn across the screen. The next thing we're gonna do is make this interactive. So we're going to make it so that when you move your mouse over the canvas, it continues to call this draw method. So it'll continue to draw new random squares all over the place. So we just call canvas on mouse move and then call our draw method every time that occurs. Now if we test this, you can see we get the results we wanted. We get it randomly drawing all these squares in new locations at new sizes every time we move our mouse. So now what we wanna do is draw a clip path. So you can use clip paths within Canvas and we're gonna do this by drawing a path before the content that we want clipped. So we go before we start drawing a random rectangles and we call context begin path. And this is going to begin our clip path. Then what we're going to do, do is draw our shape. So we're going to draw, in this case, a circle. So we call context arc, and the first parameter is the X position of the center of the circle, which is canvas width divided by two to get in the center of our canvas element. Then we do canvas height divided by two to get in the center on the Y position. Next, we have the radius of our circle, which is going to be 200, and then the start angle of our circle, which is zero, and then the finish angle of our circle in radians. So in this case, we want it to be math.pi times two for 360 degrees. Then the last parameter is whether or not you want it clockwise or counterclockwise, and this defaults to false anyways. So we're just gonna have false there. And then we close our path by calling context close path. And then we call the method, which defines this as a clip path, by calling context clip. Now if you test that, you can see it's clipping all the content that's drawn after that in our method. So all of our random squares are being clipped, but the original rectangle we're drawing that's green is not getting clipped. Now I wanna show you how to use alpha masks within Canvas. So we're going to comment out all our clip path code so that we just have their shapes drawing in the way they were before the clip path was drawn. Then we're going to set a property on our Canvas context called global composite operation. And we're going to set its value to destination in. And what this does is it means that the existing Canvas content, our destination content, is only kept where our new content overlaps. So looking at its alpha channel. We're then going to create a gradient. So we're going to create a variable for our gradient and then call context create linear gradient. And so this takes the initial xy point of the gradient and the end xy point of the gradient. 
So we want this going from left to right. So we're going to start with an x and y of 0, and then we're going to set the final x to the canvas width. So it goes completely from left to right. Then we're going to add a color stop of black. So this is going to make it completely opaque. And then at the end of it, at color stop 1, we're going to set the opacity to 0. So we'll set the color to RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0. Then we set our fill style to the variable for this gradient. And then we're going to continue to draw a shape. So in, in this instance, we're just going to draw the same shape we were using for our clip path. Um, so we'll do begin path, draw another circle, and then close the path, and then fill it. So because we changed the global composite operation to destination in, we need to reset it every time this draws. Otherwise, it's going to stay at that value, and then we'll get some really weird results. So we need to go back to the top and set global composite operation back to the default, which is source over. Then if you test this, you can see we have our circle, which is the shape we drew, and then with our gradient, creating this gradiated opacity from opaque to transparent from left to right, so the gradient fill inside that circle. We can go in and turn off the global composite operation of destination in just to see what that circle looks like on top of our content. So there you can see the circle just drawn as it would be normally without changing our compositing. And that's how you use alpha masks inside of 2D Canvas. So you can use this technique of masking with the global composite operation um, using any sort of alpha mask. So anything with an alpha channel, like a ping, an image that has some transparency in it, can be used within Canvas as a mask using this method. But what if we want to use a Luma mask, for example? Let's say video, because in some browsers, they still don't support alpha channels within video. So for example, use like a luminance mask, so a grayscale video. Well, I want to walk you through a way we can actually do that inside of Canvas. Now, I want to point out this involves a lot of processing on the JavaScript side for Canvas to do this. So in most cases, it may be better to do this on the GPU using a technology like WebGL um, and GLSL shaders, which I'll get to in another episode. But I want to show you how we actually can process this inside of 2D Canvas. So to do this, I'm going to use some existing footage um, that's Creative Commons licensed from Beeple. So I just want to do a quick little plug um, for Beeple because he's awesome. He actually puts all his Cinema 4D files and all of his assets um, open source and on the web for people to use. So I definitely suggest you guys check this out. He has VJ clips, you guys can go here. And we're just gonna go in and actually just download one of his VJ clips and use that for our example. Check him out, it's at beeplecrap.com and it's a great way to learn motion graphics and just see some amazing artwork that he's doing. So I found one I like and this is the video that we're gonna use and what I did is I just brought it into After Effects and converted it to grayscale since we want a luminance mask. And so this is what we're going to use as our mask within Canvas. So we're gonna start off with another basic HTML document. Again, we have our Canvas with the ID of my Canvas and width and height of 500. Then we're just creating a variable for our canvas by get element by ID. And then we're getting a reference to the canvas context. So get context 2D. Then we're just creating an animation loop using request animation frame and calling our draw method. So this will subsequently continue to call itself using request animation frame. Then we're setting our global composite operation to source over the default, and this is just so we don't have to reset it later, so things will continue to draw normally. Then we're clearing our canvas context, so clearing the, the entire width and height of our canvas, and then we're drawing a rectangle, so we're creating a fill style and then drawing a fill rect. That's the full width and height of our canvas. So the first thing we're going to do is create a video element so that we can actually play the video in our HTML file. So we'll create a variable for our video um, and just do an off-screen video. So we'll do document create element video 
and then we're going to set the source value of that video to our movie file and then we're going to call play so it'll automatically play the video then just set loop so it'll continue to loop through it and because I don't really want to hear it right now I'm going to set the volume to zero then we're just going to append it to the body so that we can just make sure everything works and the video loads and it looks right and so you can see we have our video playing inside our HTML document so now I can just go in and comment out the append child because we don't need that in there and what I'm going to do now is create a canvas element and this is where we're going to do all our processing so this is different from the canvas element we have in our document already we're going to create a new canvas element so create element canvas and then we're going to get the context for that so get context 2d on our video canvas and this is our video context and then we're just going to set the width and height of this to the width and height of our video file so 640 by 360 now we're going to create a new method and call it inside of our animation loop called process video and this is where we're going to actually process our luminance mask and convert it into an alpha mask. And the first thing we're going to do is draw the video onto our canvas element. And we can just test to make sure that that's working by, by appending this canvas element onto our body and uncommenting that line. And you can see we have it drawing in onto our canvas the way that it should be. The next thing we're going to do is process the video and convert it from a luminance mask, a grayscale image, to an alpha mask. So everywhere that it's dark, we're going to convert the darkness to transparency. So in order to do this, we need to call a method on our video context. So we're going to call get image data. And we're going to do this across the entire video. And this is going to collect all the pixel values. So we need to do this across the video canvas's width and height. Then we're going to access the data attribute of that image data, and this is going to give us all the pixel values. Then we iterate over all of these. And because there are four channels, the red, green, blue, and alpha channels, we need to iterate over skipping every fourth one. And that represents the colors of each individual pixel because we're skipping over each of those four channels. So what we're going to do is pick one of our color channels, and since it's grayscale, it doesn't matter which one, because they're all gonna be the same value. And then we're going to apply that to the alpha channel. So in this instance, we're going to choose the red um, channel because that's the first one. So that's gonna be the I value each time since we're skipping every four and we're going to apply that to the alpha channel, which is going to be I plus three. So this is going to take the red value and apply it to our alpha value. Then when we, we're done with that, we go ahead and take this new image data and put it back into our video context. So we draw it back onto our video context. And we do this with put image data. Then if we test this, you can see that we actually have our luminance mask converted to an alpha mask. So you can see where it's dark, all those dark values and even the grayscale darks are converted to alpha. So we can actually use this the same way we were using it before by setting the global composite operation to destination in. And then after we process the video, we can draw it into our, our normal canvas the way we did previously, just like any image. And you can see this applies it to our canvas element. So we now have our video being used as a mask. Now we can go ahead and remove it from the DOM, the, our mask, because we don't need to add it to the document. So now because we're in Canvas, we can do some interactive things and have it masked by video. So we can create a move Boolean, set this to false, and then make it so that whenever it's set to true, it's actually going to draw some different content in our screen. So in this case, we're just going to draw another colored rectangle over half of our canvas. Then we set an event listener on the canvas element. So on mouse over, we set the Boolean to true. And then on mouse out, we set it back to false. So this will give us a little hover state. And you can see if we test this, when we hover over our canvas element, we get this rectangle over the top half. And when we hover out, it's no longer visible and everything's still masked by our video content.
We could actually take this a step further and have something actually follow the mouse. So we could create a method for on mouse move on the canvas and collect the X and Y values of our mouse. And we just need to create that mouse variable for the X and Y and set it to zero. And so then if we go in and actually set our rectangle, or maybe change that to a square and set its X and Y to the mouse position, and then just remove our move if statement there, you can see we now have this square that follows the mouse behind it with all the masking still applied. So we can do some pretty cool interactive effects combined with masking and video. So that's it for my episode on masking in Canvas. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.